Hey there, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music, welcome. In this video, I want to write a love letter to a piece of gear, but I also want to spend this time making some general recommendations around the practice of buying gear because in discovering a new piece of gear that I love, I also learned a couple things that I think will be helpful for you guys going out buying gear, thinking about buying gear to better up your content creation game, music production game, composing game, whatever it is. But before we get started, as ever, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, you get notified when new videos go up. And if you like what we're doing, hit the uh, like button on this or other videos, it would mean a lot to me. And leave comments, obviously. I respond to them all. If I can, I certainly read them all. All right, let's get into the meat of this video. So I wanna start by making a truism, a generalization. And that's that it's hard for us to try new things. Um, but all of your favorite things were at some point completely unknown to you. Your favorite band, your favorite guitar, your favorite TV show, your favorite movie. And I would say that your really truly favorite things, your cherished things, were at some point alienating to you. You had to kind of push through some kind of fog to get to them. And then they sank in and became part of your DNA and part of your cherished favorite things. I know for me, um, Mad Men, one of my favorite TV shows, at first, it wasn't just new to me, it was alienating. It was slow, it was kind of boring. I don't care about the ad world, especially not in the 1950s and 60s, but once I got through that alienation, I was able to appreciate it and understand it and really cherish it on a whole other level. The same thing is true of Radiohead. I love the bends, I loved OK Computer, but then Kid A came around and Amnesiac came around and it was like, where did the guitars go? Where did the drums go? Like, what's happening? But I pushed through that alienation and I consider those records to be better than OK Computer, which I know is still a somewhat controversial statement. But I'm just saying that once you get through that fog and the things about it that are kind of weird and strange to you, you develop a deeper, richer appreciation for whatever it is you're discovering for the first time. Bring it back to the channel. If you look around my studio and I plan to do a full studio tour, there's a lot of, you know, the greatest hits of gear. I've got Yamaha NS10s, I've got Focals, which aren't maybe in every studio, but they're certainly very popular. I've got uh, Sennheiser headphones, I've got an SM7B microphone, I've got Apple computers. Um, you know, there's a lot of kind of standard stuff, stuff that you see on other channels or in other people's studios that you feel like, well, that's the gear that I need in order to be uh, operating at a professional level. And I think we all tend to do that, right? So when this company in Austria called Lewitt reached out and asked if I was interested in checking out some of the microphones, I was not sure. Lewitt has always been in my peripheral vision. They are a company that I associate for whatever reason with Austria. So Arnold Schwarzenegger, The Sound of Music, the birthplace of the subconscious, yearning for approval, but I never took Lewitt seriously. Um, not certainly as seriously as Telefunken or Neumann or Sure. again, the kind of greatest hits of microphone construction. So when I took a look at the microphone and the gear, I remembered, oh my gosh, this is that company with that neon green, green screen logo that just screams like, this is gear for gamers, not pro audio people. I. I I looked at this thing and compared it to other microphones and my id, ego, and super ego were struggling to make sense of the aesthetic choices I'm still making Austria jokes. But seriously, it was alienating. It was really weird. But then I got it in my studio and I started to use it. And then a really strange thing happened. I pushed through all of my assumptions and all the things that were alienating to me about this microphone. And I finally understood it. And now I have to say, it's one of my favorite microphones, maybe one of the best microphones that I've ever used. And to add to this validation that I felt after I pushed through, um, I got a lot of people, I, I, I work you know, from home, I've worked from home for 10 years since before the pandemic, and I've always had this ridiculous um, you know, setup here with a microphone going into an audio interface that goes into Zoom. So I've always had a couple other mics, the SM7B and the AT2020 USB-I, when I got this one, I didn't tell anyone because I use this blur and so you can't even see the mic. It just kind of, uh, the zoom captures my face and blurs everything else up. People were like, what's that mic? Is that a different mic? You sound different. You sound really good. And a few people who, you know, I work at an audio company who really know their stuff. One was a mastering engineer. He's like, 
that's a new mic, isn't it? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you sound good. You sound better than the mic you had before. And so this just kind of gave me this feeling like, okay, this is different. This is cool. This sounds great. Now, don't get me wrong. I was using my ears too and doing a lot of tests to make sure that this was the right sound for me because as I've said in other videos, you should have a bunch of microphones, especially if you're recording people so that you have options because you shouldn't just have one. Different mics suit different people differently, but getting that external validation from people who were essentially blind testing the microphone across the internet was, was really helpful. One of the things that really sealed the deal for me though with the Lewitt, and by the way, this is the LCT540. S was there was no noise in this mic and I know that people still come after me for the SM7B review that I did where um, I said there was this almost like a like Sonic Youth cover band deep in the, in the capsule just making weird noises that I had to get rid of with RX but that persists and I've done tests on the Scarlett 212 or 2i2 Golden Age 73 preamp obviously the Apollo it just follows it no matter what I plug it into there is no noise at all on this guy. Now, I don't want to do some deep technical dive into this microphone. I just want to tell you that I love it and I think it's awesome. It's got a couple of features for uh, the pad to protect against clipping. There's um, a high pass filter if you want. There's some interesting clipping uh, history technology in the, in the center button. Um, and there's also some, I think they call it perfect match technology, which is just to make sure that there's technical consistency between every single 540 uh, manufactured out there. Again, other people have made videos about this mic. I just want to kind of talk about it at a gut level and at a gear love level. And I think I've kind of achieved that. Now, if there is one downside, I would say that it's the pop filter, which magnetically kind of tacks on, kind of goes over top and just snaps on like that. In my tests and experiences, I haven't found it to be very effective at reducing or mitigating the sound of, you know, air bursts hitting the capsule and causing that pop plosive sound. So what I do is I just turn it on its side and address it off axis, which is what you're seeing now, instead of having the microphone right in front of me like that. And that seems to do the trick. And I still get that nice proximity effect. And uh, I just don't overburden the microphone with a lot of pops and wind and clicks and things like that. Finally, one of my perhaps selfishly favorite things about this microphone is that no one with a YouTube channel has it. You usually always see the big kind of windshield of the SM7B or the RE20, one of these broadcast dynamic microphones. And it just kind of feels cool to have something that no one else is using. And I've had a couple people comment to go like, what is that? I don't know what that is. I've never seen that. And it's fun to be like, it's different and you probably haven't seen it anywhere. And it just makes me feel like I've built something unique and perhaps we're setting a trend. I don't know. I don't really care, but this is for now the microphone that I love. Now, will I go back to the SM7B? Well, as you guys know, I had that mic for a really long time. I love the depth and kind of body of a dynamic microphone and certainly its ability to reject a lot of noise, but there's something I miss about the vibrancy and the richness and top end from a condenser microphone and also not having to run it through a cloud lifter type thing and, and all that stuff like, yeah, you do have to turn on phantom power, but that's not really a problem. Um, it's just a much more streamlined approach. And certainly the SM7B might make a return to the channel. Who knows? I'm open to it. Uh, but for now, I'm really happy with this guy. So I guess what I'm saying is to wrap all this up, certainly go for the greatest hits. If you're buying a piece of gear and you have your eyes, ears, and heart set on it, even if there's alternatives, you're probably going to be happier if you get the thing that you truly want and love. I've always wanted a Martin guitar. I have a lot of friends that I work with that know a lot about other companies too. And they're like, oh, well, you should check out Gibson and this and that. But deep down, I know that I really want a Martin. And if I were to buy a Gibson, I'm sure I'd be happy, but I wouldn't really be in love because my heart is set on the Martin. But this experience has taught me to really open up to other possibilities because you just might find something that really surprises you and that you fall in love with. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you want to hear this microphone against other microphones, there's a great website. I think it's called the audio or microphone test kitchen. There's a mobile link. I'm not endorsed by them or anything and a desktop app. And so I'll leave that in the show notes in the description below. Thanks as always for watching. Leave a comment. I read them all and go check out Lewitt. They're awesome. Their website, their marketing is a lot of fun and they're just great people. I'm um, sorry for all the Austria jokes, but um, we'll see you in the next one.